welcome to another video of Don't Panic Geocacher, a channel devoted to teaching you about mystery caches and how to solve them, and hopefully help you find some along the way. My name is Aryan, and I go by Waterfan5 on the geocaching.com website, and I'm here to talk today about a specific type of mystery caches, and those are the ones that have to do with maps, projections, and geometry. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to do the calculations with coordinates and how to deal with caches that talk about projections, explain what they are, how to do intersections with coordinates, triangulations, and do other types of map calculations. There is often some geometry and math involved, and I will do that today as well. And I will show you some of the tools and websites that can help you with solving these type of mystery caches. At the end, as always, I will solve one of my own puzzles that is in this category. And it's a pretty complicated one, kind of uses all the things that you may expect, but if you understand how to solve that one, you can solve 99% of all the geometry-based puzzles out there. So let's take a look and uh, just some of the theory behind it, right? So um, when we talk about puzzles, then you often see something like this. From the posted coordinates go 1200 feet at 48 degrees and that can vary of course right what they tell you the numbers that they tell you units that they tell you they use obscure units and the degrees may not always be as simple as this but it's the fact that you have two elements you have a distance in this case 1200 feet and you have a direction which is the 48 degrees in this case if you only have one of those if you only have a distance that will generate a circle because you don't know where to go, which direction to go. And if you only have a direction, you kind of create a never ending line, right? You keep on walking, but you don't know how far you only have a direction. Now, of course you can do this in real life and say, well, I'm here, I'm gonna go walk. And to be frank, I've done that because in certain cases that might be the easiest way to do it, but it's much easier to do calculations. And if you have both, you can do, um, yeah, you can do what is called a projection. Go to a certain distance in a certain degree. Now, let's take a little bit deeper look into that. So here you see, go from a phantom coordinate here, and we only know the distance, so 1200 feet, then you get this circle, because it could be in any of the degrees of the circle, right? Zero to 360. You don't know where we go, so all of these could be where we need to go. You just know the distance. If we just know um, the direction, the line, so we know 48 degrees, this direction, we get like a line from the starting coordinates, but we don't know how far we need to walk. We just need to keep walking to the hound, you know, hop over any obstacle that we see, hoping to find a geocache along the way. Also not great. But if we have both, we have the direction and the distance, we end up at one exact point, point B, and hopefully that's then where we place the cache, right? Now, how do we calculate that point B? That is where those tools will come in. I'm gonna show on some websites later on that can help you calculate those. But first, let's just talk about some of the principles, right? Projections are by far the most common type of puzzles that you will see. But sometimes more complicated things are being asked of you. And I will show you some examples of those as well. For example, we have two points person A and a person B, and we have two directions. One walks in a certain direction, another walks in a certain direction. Note, for neither of them we have a distance in this case. We have two points, two directions. What that creates is a line intersection, because we don't know how far they have to walk, but we know that there is a meeting point somewhere, because hopefully if they walk close enough to each other, then they will eventually meet up and they follow the lines that they need to walk in and we won't end up this, this point. So if you get two coordinates and two directions, you create a so-called line intersection. With two lines, they intersect with each other. And again, I'm going to show you later on how to calculate that using some of the tools. So this is if you have two points, two directions. What if we have two points and we have a direction, and for the other one, we have a distance. Well, that is visualized here, right? So for one, we only have a direction, that is that never-ending line. 
For the other one, we have the distance that creates a circle. Hopefully they overlap in two points. And that's what you see here. And it will always be two because they kind of like enter their circle and they leave their circle. And you may see things like to say like, oh, person A starts walking or goes in this direction or shines a light in a certain direction. But you have a direction. For the other one, you have a distance. And now what you have to do is called a circle line intersection. And you get two points. So you need to have a slightly more information about which of these points is the one you're interested in. So we have to always deal with that. So there may be another hint somewhere to say, oh, it is the closest one to this. Or there might be some other hint of which of the two points you need. Sometimes one point is outside of the two mile radius. So that is another way to eliminate one of the points. Sometimes you may just have to check both points and the geocache will be at either of those points. Another variant and that you have, you have two distances. Now, if you have two distances, you will get again two overlaps unless they overlap exactly in one point. But in most cases you will have something like this, point A, point B, and we have two distances. For example, they say, oh, we can see this far away or we know we're this far away from person A is this far away from the object and he's this far away from another object. So we have two circles, right? This is object A, object B. And we know how far away he is, or she is from each of the areas. This will still generate two, two points because, well, as you see here, the two circles will have two overlaps. If we had a third circle, um, then we could get to one point, right? If we have a third one, we could say, well, it's this far distance from a third point, and now we would be able to use it to a single point. That is called triangulation. Try for three. We have three circles, we can get to an exact point. But with two circles, we get to two points. Now, triangulations was often used to get to calculate an exact coordinate. It says, I'm this far away from A, this far away from B, this far away from C. And now we would get only one point that would match up, right? If it was distances were mentioned correctly. So those are some of the common things that you will talk about. It's about the line intersections. We have two directions. Circle and line intersection. We have a circle um, and a line that intersects, so a distance and a direction. Or we have, in this case, only two uh, distances. And we have we have three, we get to a single point. We have two, we get two points, and we have to figure out which one. For example, the northernmost or the southernmost. Now, to calculate these, um, there's a lot of tools out there that can help you. And I will demonstrate some of them in this video. So, Geocaching Toolbox um, has some of the tools. Uh, Cacheleuth has some of the tools as well. It's a very specific one, Jawawa. I think Java, not sure how to pronounce that. Um, but this has some specific uh, tools to do that. It has actually quite extensive tools. Same as now, listen to me. It has some, quite some extensive tools. And even a pure math tool like Wolfram Alpha can help you solve these puzzles. Don't do location coordinates calculations with that. We just talked about it. the Earth is round. It gets get pretty complicated. But as long as you stick to pure math, it's pretty good. Since often these type of puzzles may be field puzzles, it's good to have some tools on your phone as well. Um, most of the standard geocaching apps, like uh, the geocaching.com one and the CGO and Cachely and some of the other ones, they can have at least projections and sometimes they can even have more. Um, there's also some specialized tools that you can install. Uh, GC Wizard and GC Tools are some mobile phone apps that you can install and they can do most of the things we talk about here. Right? line intersections, uh, projections. And so I would recommend to install this tool. But for a desktop, um, and this video by far is best to watch on the desktop, I would recommend using one of the websites that's just more user-friendly and uh, easy to use. But if you're on the phone, yeah, install GC Wizard or GC Tools, and there's probably some others out there, in addition to just your regular um, geocaching app that you use. Most of them can do projections, but it gets more complicated. We'll need to use these two tools. So I'll demonstrate uh, some of them, and that way you get familiar with them. 
So I will uh, go through the demonstration of the websites. So this is uh, the geocaching toolbox, and it has same things: coordinate conversion, coordinate projection, uh, bearing and distance, intersection of circle, intersection of lines. Don't think this one has the ability to do uh, intersection of a line with a circle, but it can do a lot of the other ones. Um, so let's take a look, look at some coordinate projection. So this is the where we go into a certain distance in a certain angle so say here starting coordinates go in a certain so let's say 48 48 and 1700 feet calculate and now we see where it starts and then where it ends so this is the projection that we need okay go back to our toolbox let's go to distance between two points so if we need to know the distance between two points or the midway point we need to know the distance to do the midway point so we enter the two coordinates and we get the distance of course we can specify the unit so the common units here and then uh, we get the angle between the two it's the 72 degrees and um, the midway point is right here of course that is the coordinates Okay, going back. Intersection. So this is the two static objects that you try to kind of like triangulate. Where is it? Where am I? So in this case, uh, you need two circles. So circle one starts here. Object two is right here. Distance of how far away from object one. How far away are we from object two? And now we show that on map. Note this one can also draw more circles if you need to. So we see it right here, circle A, circle B, and the two intersection points. Note uh, this one doesn't really tell us what the intersection points are. It just tells us that there is two intersection points. But now you kind of have to specify it yourself. This point is not, or it's just a center point of the circle. Section of lines. So here, take one line, one point starting somewhere, second starts somewhere else, two degrees. So here's the two points. Calculate that. So now we see, let's say, person A starts here, this direction, person B goes this direction, that is the given. And then this is where they meet, right? So, or it could be that you say, oh, I see this in this direction. I see it from there. I see it in that direction. And now what am I looking at? Then this point. <clears throat> so you have the two directions. You have the coordinates. The two points, the two points. So yeah, so that is some of the uh, capabilities of the caching toolbox. So this is Cashless. It has a variety of map tools. Category here, coordinate conversions, midpoint calculations, projections, two circle, um, center of a triangle, triangulation, two line intersection. So all the things that I just gave some examples about. So let's show how it works. Let's start with uh, the midpoint calculation. So we'll give it two coordinates. One coordinate, coordinates, calculate distance. So we get the distance and we see here the midpoint, midpoint coordinate is right here. So if that is the solution, we have it right here and you see it on the graph. So we can verify that we entered the right coordinates. Going back to projection. So projection is that you walk a distance in a certain direction. So we start again by a coordinate, walk a certain distance. So let's say this is 17 feet, and we walk it 48 degrees. And we see here starting point, projection, and then the 
bitrate point is also displayed, but the projection is in this case what we're interested in. So that is the final destination here of this equation. So 1700. Go to the next one, two circle intersection. So that's the two objects that both have a certain range. So this could be that you're saying like, oh, we're standing somewhere. This point is so far away. This point is so far away. Where are we? <laughs> so we have the two points with how far away they are. And uh, let's say that this one is uh, 17. It's two meters this time. The other one is 1,000 meters. We calculate. And so we see the two points, A and B. And these are the two points that are exactly at the distances provided. So the 1700 from A, 1000 from B, get the two points that match that. So where the two circles open. The next one is a line and a circle. So here uh, we need to define a line. Now on this website, a line is then defined by two coordinates. Uh, sometimes it's defined as a a coordinate and a direction, but here is two coordinates. And uh, the circle, so that must be a third point, that is the circle that now overlaps. And we say, okay, where do they overlap? So again, two points. Uh, it could be that it doesn't overlap at all, right? If it's not in the same area, but here you see it overlaps at these two intersection points that are marked here. And we have the coordinates here. So we need some additional information. Or maybe we have to derive like, oh, this looks like a better one because this is private property or something. But typically a line and a circle will have two points where they intersect. Last one here is the two lines. So in this case, we have two coordinates and from each one, walk in a certain direction. So we have to do the two coordinates and we'll say for one we go 48, so 48 degrees, the other one 12. So the degrees are always between 0 and 360, right? full compass. So we'll do that and we see here, A, we go this direction, B goes in that direction and we get the intersection point. And that is now the answer to our puzzle. So that's how simple it is. Um, most other sites or mobile apps will be very similar. So I'll show a few. Let's take a look at what this one can do. It has a lot of different options, so distances, uh, but also the intersection of lines, the intersection of two circles, uh, but also triangulation, circle from three points, and orto centers, and some other things. Let's first do the midway point. So we need two coordinates. So we'll enter coordinate number one, coordinate number two. And there we go. We see this is the midway point also displayed here. Let's change the settings. Degrees and minutes. There we go. So degrees and minutes get it right here. Next one. Uh, simple projection, by far the most common one. So for a projection, starting coordinate, and then a bearing, so degrees like true north, 48 true north, and a certain distance, right? So how far are to go in that direction? And if we do that, we see the starting point and here the projection. Okay. Now, um, We'll do the intersection between two circles. So two circles. So that's the two objects and kind of like triangulate two points. How far away are we? First point seventy hundred meters away from the second one thousand meters away. Where are we? So point A, point B. We're either here or there. Two points, you get two solutions if you three points hopefully you can derive it to one solution 
So but you see a lot of puzzles like that that they say, well I have two, three points with distances. That's the overlap between circles. The one between line and a circle. So let's do that as well. So this means that uh, where basically where where are you in a distance of a certain object, a certain area? Where you so that is this one line and a circle. So the line also here is defined by two segments, begin so point and end point. And then we have circle, so where is our object? And in what distance can we see or hear or whatever it is that we interact with that object, right? So you see that this is where the object is. This is how we walked, and this is the two points where we got into range and left the range, right? So and all the all the way in here we are in range, kind of of the object. So those were some of the um, yeah examples that we talked about with puzzles and this website solves them. So next, the um, working out of a puzzle, running in circles, of course one of my own puzzles, take about. 20, 20 minutes or so to explain all the steps in it. So it's pretty extensive, but it will go through all the things like projections, midpoints, uh, circle intersections, and anything that really has to do with what you might encounter. So um, yeah, a very comprehensive puzzle or difficult one. Of course. But uh, if you want to skip it, you can of course skip it. If you still want to solve it by yourself, you can also stop at any point because it'll only explain so far, so maybe you're stuck at how to start, so you can only go so far. Or if you're stuck halfway, you can just get the next step, right? Only at the end, I will show you the final coordinates, and that will solve quickly. Interesting, just the final coordinates, it save yourself some time. Oh, 21 minutes, really doesn't matter. So yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at one of my puzzles, uh, running in circles. By me, and this is a mystery puzzle. Difficulty four. So this from a geometry puzzle. This is going to be probably as complicated as you will see. So the other hint here is that the checker will actually have a certain accuracy. So thirty meters is actually pretty generous, meaning that if you're roughly in the area, uh, be good. And um, we now have to start calculating. A whole bunch of text here that will guide us how to do the calculations. And that's all the different techniques. And at the end, there's like a geo checker that you need to be within 30 meters. Now this is important because in the calculations here, we're gonna use regular uh, coordinate system. That is always gonna be slightly off. Um, so we will see some inaccuracies here when we go with, but we kind of ignore them because we can do this 30 meters you see here. So let's start following the instructions step by step. So three friends, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, A, B, and C, have built their own Maple radar system. And they decide to meet at the posted coordinates. So we know the posted coordinates are going to be important. So let's start with that. And then we'll say, okay, Alpha, well, Bravo, why don't you start walking in the direction of 78 point something degrees, right? So this is where we do that projection part, we have a certain but we need to find out how far he's going to walk. Well, still we have no overlapping areas between our radar. It doesn't mean anything. We don't know how strong their radar is, but this will be relevant later on. So they both are basically at two locations. They both have kind of like a radar type system, and they're basically looking to far how far they can see. Okay, I've reached my destination. It seems that I'm 1,200 feet away. So this is important, we have a degree and a distance. So this is a projection. So that's what we're going to do. Start at the posted coordinates, right here. And I'm gonna use, now listen to me, since for this puzzle, it's just a way to demonstrate it, but you can use pretty much any of the sites that I just talked about. So start the posted coordinates, that's where I was, and that brings us at the beginning of the park. 
and then the other one was going to walk in a certain distance, right? That's what we talked about. He was going to walk at uh, 1,200 feet. So type in 1,200 here. Just change the distance here to feet, so I don't have to type feet all the time. But let's type feet for now. And then we need to uh, get the degrees, right? Of how far I actually walked. And then a certain angle. So this is the angle that we want. So it walks in this direction, this far, and ends up at this location. Well, this was called the projection, and it will tell us right away here this is the coordinate for that projection. So that's now where Bravo B ended up. So we go in B, we're going to call that Bravo. And that's where uh, they are. So that is from the instructions is. We walked in this direction with 1200 feet. Then, well, remember my radar covers twice the area that your radar covers. Huh? So, this is where we now have to use a little bit of real math um, because we now have two distances and from earlier on areas, uh, those are circles. And he says, well, my circle is twice as big, covers twice as big area, right? So, it's the area of a circle. So, we have to do some real math here. This is Really, the only part where real math, other than terminology, involved area of a circle. And we see here the formula that the area is pi times the radius of the circle, so how wide the circle is squared. Now we know we have two circles, they're 1200 feet apart. Let's call this the radiuses A and B. They're 1200 apart. And then we have to see, um, well, if we do 2 times the circle of A, so pi times is uh, equal to the other one, right? So B squared. So basically we say the two radiuses are 1200 because that's the distance between the two. And we know that the area of um, A is about twice the area of uh, half of the B, right? So if we do twice the first one, that should equal. Let's see what it calculates for us. And it gives us two solutions. It's quite common if you work with squares, square roots, squares. Um, let's take a look at both of them. Well, this one doesn't look very good uh, because we have a minus and we can't have a negative distance. Let's take a look at the other one. That looks much better. It's 498 and 702.9, so let's use 703. 703 feet. So we know that the uh, distance of uh, the smaller one, so it's also the alpha one, is uh, 497, and the other one is 703. So let's see what that looks like in our um, little circles. So if we say that this one was 497 distance, get a circle, sorry, B, back to point A, 497, no longer need to Bearing at this point, and the other one is 703. And see, they should right meet up in the middle, right? So they touch each other nicely. So this distance is 1200 from A to B, and then this circle covers twice as much area. Just did the math to calculate that. So we have a point. Okay, did the first part. Charlie gets involved. Why don't I go to the pot that's right in the middle of the view and I walk in a south southeast direction and keep equal distance to the middle? Well, we first need to know what the middle point is, right? So there's two ways to calculate that. It's basically this is 1200, we need to go to 600. But this tool can just tell us. So I'm just going midpoint, gives us this location, start a new point. See start. Let's see what it is. And it looks right in the middle between A and B. So that's good. So we have this midpoint. And he's going to go walk into what was like equal distance south southeast. So he's going to walk down in this direction. So the angle would that be the same angle as that we had in the beginning? So that was that also gave us this plus 90 degrees. So this is what 
know that you have to walk in a 90 degree. So if we start here, 90 degree angle, we start walking the same distance. So um, 78 plus 90 is 168. Let's see what that looks like. He's walking this way, right? Okay. Don't know how far he walks. We'll figure that out. So that is good. Um, and that's as long as he keeps walking on that line, he stays equal distance from both A and B. So we're good. Let's find out how far he's walking. So he walks south, south, east direction, east direction. Good. I'll walk till he reaches his maximum capacity. And it intersects where their radars intersect, right? A and B intersects. Well, we haven't calculated that point yet. So let's do that. Um, so that is this point. I click here just on the map. It will tell me roughly what it is, but it's much better to have it calculate. So we know this direction, right? And we know this distance because this direction was that original 78 one. So that was this degrees. And we know that it is from this one is 497. From this one, it's 703. So let's get that point. So that would be a projection again. So we say we want a projection between A and B. And so we'll see that it's right at this point, and that's the one that we want. So from A, the projection is this coordinate. That matches pretty close to when we clicked on it, right? 187, 284, 188. Okay, so let's sort that as well. So if this collection, and this is where A and B meet, right? Store that point as well. Call it A plus B is where they meet. Okay. So we have C walking. This is where they meet. And he is going to intersect with that. But we don't know how far he's walking. Okay. We just know that it is an overlap. So let's go back to the circle. So let's remove this again. So we get a nice little circle. Because we only have the distance. He's going to overlap. Well, how far? Started at point C, walks in this direction. Let's start with the number thousand. Right, he's going to walk thousand feet. Okay, thousand feet will bring us uh, this projection bring us right here. Now, the tool has a little trick. Uh, we can actually store that. So if we go to point and we say we want a projection of three, we can say equal equal three. If we say equals three, it's just a point itself. If we say equals equals three. In this tool, it means the projection. And we say that it is um, walked like a thousand feet. So we can copy that from point three and say a thousand feet. Okay. So now we have from A, B, and we see it's pretty close to this point, right? It won't be because it's a little bit of a curvature, but it's almost neglectable. So, okay, that's great. Let's see. We, don't, we just guessed 1,000, right? So we didn't know if it was 1,000. But we know that, uh, if we start reading further, that he reached this point, but it seems to have a bit of an overlap with the areas, and the overlap is 607, 607,000 square feet. Okay? So what is the overlap? Well, that would be the overlap between these circles, right? So how much he overlaps with this area, and how much he does with this area. Um, that gets some pretty tricky math. Fortunately, you can just ask us to calculate us that. And with a thousand feet, it would add up to 699 or 50. That is too much. 650. So we're off. <laughs> Let's take a different distance. So thousand is incorrect. So we're just going to guess uh, 500 here. Get to new numbers. It's a 94 and 260. That's not enough, right? It's around 350 somewhere. We need it 607. Let's try uh, 750. Uh, and that brings us to 372 and 155. If you add those two, again, you're short 500 range. So the thousand was actually turned out to be pretty close. Let's try 950. We'll get. Um, 627, still too much. We're just guessing here, right? We can calculate it, but we really want, don't want to do the math. It's 
much easier to just do a couple of guesses and bring us closer to where we want. This looks pretty good. Um, this is combined six so six it looks so that is pretty close. Uh, it's actually pretty close to six or seven exactly. The additional calculation. So it's pretty good. However, we still had that inaccuracy, right? We said this one goes all the way here, but it's almost neglectable. But let's see what this distance is between number five. Let's call that one where Charlie actually ended up. So right, that's Charlie. And this point A, point B, let's track the actual distance. And it needs to be um, the same that we walked, right? So we need to be, so it's 901. We're only roughly one feet off. So we can make a small correction if we wanted to. Um, we could say, okay, if I make the circle bigger, that means that I will cover more area. So if I make the circle slightly smaller, let's say that we he only walked 899, but then at the end, um, his radar still covers the original 900, right? 100. We now slightly adjusted that inaccuracy. So we now see that he, the distance is 900. That's exactly what we want. Because now he goes exactly to the circle. So we've gotten roughly through the inaccuracy. And if we do the overlaps, should still be very close to that 607. We see this 607.23. It's all pretty close. So at this point, uh, we're going to go that we have close enough for us to get us to the final. That we have. So what do we need to do next? So we've covered the distance. We now know where C is. So we have A here, B here, C here, and well, let's see what the next instructions are. Bravo. Okay, Charlie, you know I want to go to the eastern point of the coverage of our two radars. So this is, you know, the distances, how far they can see, right? So one can see 900 feet, the other one can see um, 497, and the other one 703. So this is the situation where you have two areas and you have to do circle overlaps, right? Eastern point. And Alpha says, I will go to the western point where the radar covers. So this is where you have two distances, two circles, and where do they overlap? Well, we see that already nicely displayed here. A bit of a Mickey Mouse going on. So western, is of course, would be on the left side. So that would be roughly right here. Right? And then eastern one is where the other one goes, is right there. Note they overlap here as well. But apparently that is not the point that we're looking for. We're looking for these two points where they meet, right? Where they intersect. So that was the distances that we're looking for here. So going back, um, how do we get that? Well, the tool can tell us. So circle intersections, and we'll get four intersections, right? In circles, because we get where these two circles overlap here, here, here. And again, there. But we don't need that this point, one that's close to here. And we see that that one is given here as an intersection as well. And here is another one that is pretty close. It's only one off. Um, that's again because of the inaccuracies we're working with the coordinate system we're working with. <coughs> if we walk in degrees, then we will get slightly more accuracy because we won't get the round. So we have this point. So let's actually start a new one here. And this is the first point, that's where A and uh, Alpha and Charlie meet. This is this western point location. And let's see what it is. So we clear out everything. This location, that is where he walked, right? The new location of Alpha. Right next to the path. It seems to match up here, yep. And then the next one is the other location, so we don't need the one that resembles where A and B matches. So we'll do that one. And we go here, and that is the new Bravo location, which is right there, on the right side. So those are the two intersection points. Okay, so let's see what we need to do. 
So they walked how far reached this location. So that is the intersection point. Bravo leaves the location. Charlie stays where he was. Okay. Where was Charlie? So go back. That is this point, right? C. Um, and we can see that right here. Point C is right here. I will copy that one as well. So this is the third one. And that is C. So A, C. We have three points. And then Alpha says, I have an ID. How about we go to the point that is an equal distance away from all of us? Well, if you have three coordinates and you need to calculate something that is an equal distance from all three, it's actually called triangulation. And so you will see puzzles that do that, right? They give you three points and they say, go to a point that is equal distance from all of us. That's called triangulation. It's basically that you have to draw a circle and that goes through all three points. That center point is then called the circumcenter. So that's what we're going to calculate here. So we're asking it to calculate the circumcenter for us. No longer interested in any of this. And we're just going to so all the different intersections, all the centers. And so only use the first three points. That's why I started the new one. So nicely three points. And it will ask us for the three points. What does this mean? Um, if they go to the equal points, it says that's where they're going to hide the cache. So they're going to hide the cache at the circumcenter. So at this point, let's do the final calculation. So we see it calculates three uh, centers, circumcenter, the in-center, the centroid. Um, it's basically, so two of them would be right inside the circle because those would be the in-center and the centroid. That is equal angle and 90 degree from all three so those are not the one we're interested in. we're interested in this point circle center which is equal distance let's see where that one is and that is right there and this would be the cache location right that's what we need so um, let's do a quick verification if we do the distances this one should roughly be the same distance to so this is uh, final should be equal distance to A, B, and C. So let's verify that. So from uh, UA to the final, it's 1178. It's 1176. Uh, B to the final, 7978. It's not exact, but as I mentioned, we expected some inaccuracies because of the coordinate system and the calculations that we did. So let's do that. So let's uh, take. Well, this one. If we draw a circle, then that circle should go through all three points. Let's, let's verify that. It's the distance of the circle. Sure, we're still in the Yep. And so we see that indeed that circle goes nicely, and we have done the triangulation of all three without having to do all the complicated math behind it. And we get the location at the final criteria, right? How do we go to a point that's equal from us? Yes. Now that we're all together, hide the cache, solve the puzzle. So yeah, it takes us a good 20-25 minutes to guide you through this. So as I mentioned, pretty complicated, but we've done all the things, right? We've done projections, circle intersections. Uh, we've done uh, circle overlaps. And these are typically the things you could expect in a more complicated. Most puzzles, they will only ask you one of those. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please press the like button or upvote it so that uh, others can find this as well and it can be helpful for other people and maybe to solve and create more mystery caches in your area. If you have any questions, uh, any suggestions, you please leave a comment. If you liked it, please tell me why you liked it. I um, highly appreciate that. If you have questions, feel free to contact me. Um, reach me on waterpen5 at the geocaching.com website or um, by gmail geocacher.waterpen5. Any suggestions, you have certain type of puzzles you would like me to talk about or you have maybe puzzles that you have that you would like to see um, discussed here, more than happy to do that as well. Feel free to contact me, more than happy to work with you. Meantime, uh, yeah, time to sign off and hopefully next time 
Well, I think panic a little bit less and seeing a mystery cache. 